Hannah McClain can't actually be here today because she's still in Barcelona, but um, Alex has also been involved in projects, so he may be able to deal with other questions from it. And she did send in quite an explicit paper, so um, I know it's sometimes difficult to listen to something being read, so bear with me. Um, the Edinburgh Archaeology Outreach Project is a non-profit free community archaeology group run by the students of the University of Edinburgh. Our primary function is to enable children to have the opportunity to engage in a field that they, they perhaps feel that they can't get involved in. We are not the only project to tackle this. We are in fact only a drop in the ocean when it comes to archaeological outreach. There are programmes being run throughout Britain doing fantastic things to build upon community archaeology. To name but a few, there is the Young Archaeologists Club in York who are creating aerial maps of archaeologically significant landmarks in a way that they are accessible to those who are partially sighted. The Society of Antiquities of Scotland are running Dig It 2015 in which they are promoting and running a host of national, nationwide events and talks as well as promoting projects, of which the Edinburgh Archaeology Outreach Project is one. The majority of these projects are created towards children these are just a small handful of the pretty cool outreach and community work being done. This of course then highlights the question of where amongst all this is the, the need for the Edinburgh Archaeology Outreach Project? Why are we here? What makes us different? To answer these questions an important number should be remembered, be remembered and that number is 220,000. 220,000 is the number of children that live in poverty in Scotland which is more than a fifth of the total child population. Now I'm not here, both literally and figuratively, to argue the political and social reasons behind this abhorrent number. It is, however, a number we should remember, as it's all too relevant to the education and getting children involved in archaeology. As fantastic as the projects that run through Bad Britain are, the majority require some kind of financial output by those involved. Be this Young Archaeologists Club membership or a session fee, or the cost of a bus to the National Museum of Scotland. Even those that visit schools require payment or are limited in how much visits they can do, perhaps as few as four to the school year as a result of their own personal funding restrictions. The point of the Edinburgh Archaeology Outreach Project is that it's completely free to those who we visit and we have in our first six months of running been on over 30 visits to see over 600 children in the Ed Edinburgh and Lothians. This therefore results in the opportunity to get involved to, in archaeology, not being limited to those who have the means to go, as we bring the discipline to them. The schools that we cover um, uh, cover a wide range of topic areas, and we try to cater to these. These include ancient Egypt, the Vikings, Neolithic Scotland, and World War II, amongst others. Community groups differ slightly in that they have no set topic, and thus we are free to have whatever um, we want to focus on, or the lack of that. Regardless of the slant we put on the visit, however, they all commence in the same f fashion, following the same setup. A short introductory talk covering the basics or archaeology, and particularly in relation to their topic, and then three to four stations where they can rotate around and gain practical hands-on opportunities. These stations are modified for each visit based upon what each visit is tailoring to what the volunteers leading are, are interested in and what creative nuggets their brain can spit out and most importantly the age group of those people who are visiting. While we may be foaming at the mouth to utilise a newly designed pit grid and artefact sheets for replica excavations, it isn't going to work with five-year-olds. We would be best met with a sea of blank stairs and bewilderment. Therefore in that situation it's best to scale back and opt instead to utilise other resources. Instead of having them following grids and filling out forms, focusing on showing how you have to be careful when you excavate, why you have to be careful, and the importance of teamwork, and then instead of documenting their finds, get them to take them to the next station where they can fill in a simplified artifact illustration sheet, because what five year old doesn't love Crayola? The Edinburgh Outreach Project wasn't created with the intention of forming some sort of small statured super army of archaeologists although that would make for a fantastic movie. We only want to educate children in the subject that we all love. 
Therefore, the last thing we want is for anyone to come away from our visit less knowledgeable about archaeology than we, when we started. <coughs> and that's why age appropriation is so vital. The children we visit have ranged in age from four years old to 17 year olds. There are aspects of archaeology that can be taught to children. And with a few simple exp expansions to the content, be appropriate to teenagers and adults too. A prime example of age appropriation in action is to compare and contrast the way in which osteoarchaeology is presented to those different ages. During the visit, this is touched upon using a collection of animal re remains loaned from the University of Edinburgh's collections. For the younger participants of our visits, which is the majority, as most of our visits are to under 10, we propose focusing on getting into identifying the bones and their function. Is this from a small animal or a large animal? Why do you think that? For the older audience, of which admittedly we have less experience, it can be useful to look at another event that occurred this summer at the University of Edinburgh. The Equal Access Programme for School High Flyers workshops introduced local high school children to forensic anthropology. In this, in this participants were older, around 16 or 17, and therefore there was much more depth to the discussion. They looked at sexing methods and trauma identification, from, and from the feedback gathered, it seems it was pitched correctly and therefore successful. Osteoarchaeology is just one of the examples of how archaeology is a particularly easy subject to make age appropriate. And therefore, as a result, archaeological outreach is not particularly difficult. This year, under the guidance and leadership of Liera Rondello, the Edinburgh Outreach Project is moving into doing more events that reach largest sums of people in one visit. Already in the first month, having attended the Science Festival and in November, Skills Scotland, an event in which two and a half thousand high school students were attended an exhibition showing all fields and careers of which archaeology is representative. For us, though, it is integral, integral that however large or small the event, or however old the attendees, that we keep the practical aspect of archaeological teaching alive and represented. Archaeology has a tendency to be viewed as stuffy and therefore not relatable. It can be viewed as being something that people see on TV and the movies, but don't really realise that they can be involved in themselves. By appropriately teaching the subject to younger audiences, as well as those in higher education, we can start the movement to reverse this idea and encourage the next generation to get actively involved in archaeology and heritage. And that's it from Hannah.